Hey guys, Chris Ignato here. So today, I want to talk to you about caddisfly larvae and what makes them so cool. Let's get rolling. So not only are caddisfly larvae pretty cool, but they are also pretty beneficial to the ecosystem. I mean, their vegetarian diet cuts back on algae and plants in the bodies of water, but they also provide a staple food source to all sorts of fish species. So much so, in fact, that there are fly lures designed specifically to mimic caddisfly larvae, and you catch a lot of trout with them. These larvae here have been found in vernal pools, but there are also species found in ponds, lakes, rivers, and streams. Almost every single river in the world will play host to at least one or two species of caddisfly. In order to keep up with the pressures of predation, caddisfly have come up with a marvelous solution to the problem, and that is by designing an amazing feat of architecture that you see here. They have a sticky silk in which they use to glue bits of their environment together to provide that protective home. They'll use anything from bits of gravel and small stones to twigs, leaves, algae, and even the roots of plants. That home not only acts as a safe retreat providing protection and wonderful camouflage, but it also serves as ballast to keep them from floating up. Caddisfly larvae that live in streams will actually use more gravel and stones to keep that rushing water from washing them downstream. That's pretty cool. These animals should be called the stonemasons of the insect world. As you can imagine, the protective case that the caddisfly construct is very portable, not unlike that of a snail shell. I took several specimens home for the purpose of filming this video and observation. It's fun to put different materials in the jar and see which ones they prefer to build their homes. They're extremely resourceful. They will use whatever's at their disposal to construct their homes. This one here is used a lot at the algae and moss within the container. And this one here, lacking moss in its container, has used little rootlets of duckweed and water plants to construct its case. I think it's really cool looking. Being that their cases are constructed of durable materials, there have been many fossil specimens found in the Triassic, Jurassic, and early Cretaceous periods. So another cool thing about caddisfly larvae is if you look really, oh my god, I just found the coolest thing. I've only probably seen two of these in the wild. I don't want to scare it. Check this little beast out. How cool is that? Adamita dissonia or something like that? And it looks like it doesn't even care that I'm here. See those aposomatic coloration? That normally means that it either tastes really nasty or it packs a punch. Looking at that mouth, it probably packs quite a bite. So, you know, I've only probably seen two of those in the wild over all the years. And normally they prefer different environments. They like higher elevations and old ruins and stuff. But with nature, you can never predict what you're gonna find. So I'm really excited about this. And I don't want to handle it because it might bite me. I'm going to try to get some pictures and then back to the video. Caddisfly larvae have come up with many adaptations to the cases in which they construct. In fact, there is one species of caddisfly that doesn't just use that sticky silk to construct a home. No, it uses it to build a net just upstream. It catches floating particles of algae and other debris that the larva goes on up to and selects its pick from the buffet. That is incredible. There are predatory species also that will either hunt their prey, which includes insects, tiny crustaceans, and sometimes worms, or they'll lie in wait and ambush their prey as it comes close. There's even an opportunistic species that will feed on carrion. As the larva matures and grows bigger, it just adds to its home, getting bigger and bigger. Like many of the freshwater invertebrates in my previous videos, caddisflies serve as wonderful indicators of the quality of the environment. Um, if the bodies of water they live in don't have a lot of oxygen, they don't do very well. If the waters are polluted or the surrounding landscape is polluted, they'll perish. 
The larvae absorb oxygen from the water through a series of thread-like gills lining their entire abdomen. These gills are protected by their, their constructed home, but sometimes they'll reach far outside of their, their case and you'll get a wonderful glimpse of those thread-like gills. It's pretty neat looking. The first time I saw it, I thought it was a bunch of parasitic worms and I felt pretty bad for the larva. But I researched them and found out the answer. If you look closely, you can see its abdomen undulating back and forth to provide a current of freshly oxygenated water over its gills. Like many of the creatures in my videos, the larval stage lasts far longer than that of the adult stage. They'll go anywhere from a year or two as larva, but only spend a couple of weeks as adults. For that matter, the adults don't even feed on anything. This is what the adult looks like, and as I said previously, it's not going to live very long, just a couple of weeks or so. Its main purpose now is to find a mate and reproduce. So, wow, caddisfly larva. Next time you're in a woodland and you find a vernal pool or even a stream, why don't you try looking closely and see if you find a little, a little tube of, say, pebbles or stones or a home constructed of the leaves and algae. They're really cool to watch and you can kill a bunch of hours just staring at these things. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.